All right. So this meet all these classes are recorded, and uh, those of you who are new, uh, I will make sure you get the link to my um, YouTube channel, which has every recorded class, which you're welcome to access for free, whenever you want. Uh, Tosh, how about you? Hi. I am Tashleen. I am in Brooklyn, New York, and um, I've been taking these classes since maybe like February or January. Like Buzzfeed, I work at Buzzfeed, and we are we just started this year, and now I'm kind of obsessed and want to come to every class. And get really good. Um, come to almost every class. <laughs> <laughs> and I will say the biggest thing I've learned is you can always edit and always fix things. So just give it a try and show up. Awesome, Julia. Hi, I'm Julia. I'm in I'm in London. Um, I'm with Reuters. I started in January. Um, I hadn't picked up a pencil since I was 15, which is a very long time. Um, and um, yeah, I had no real expectations. And um, what I've realised is, with some good teaching, you can actually amaze yourself. It's really surprising, and I'm just loving the journey. I love it. Yes, you will amaze yourself. That is my goal. <laughs> you can amaze yourself. Uh, Sandra, and uh, did you want to pop in for a second and say? Uh, sure. Um, sorry, turn on the camera. Yeah. So my name is Sandra. I'm with Reuters in Washington, D.C. And uh, I joined Leah's classes a bit more than a year ago. It was in March 2020. Um, and I've just finished cancer treatment. I'm in full remission. But I have to say that throughout, the, throughout it and throughout the worst of it, one of the things that really sustained me were these classes. Leah's various classes during the week. Uh, it gave me, you know, something to look forward to in the day. Um, I mean, even at night when I couldn't sleep, I would watch like painting videos. So it's something that now has become really vital to my life. And I'm going back to work on Tuesday and I'm certainly very much intending to continuing this. So welcome, it's a great thing. Great. Uh, Lana, did you want to say anything? Sometimes Lana has video and sometimes she has audio and sometimes she doesn't. Lana's in New York um, with Reuters. You're, you'll notice, uh, those of you who are private clients, um, that some people are introducing themselves by their company. That is because uh, you take classes along with a, a program I offer to companies called Art at Work, where the company actually pays me to offer classes to everyone. Cool. It is pretty amazing. Uh, so Reuters is in it. Uh, LA, uh, the LA Press Club is in it. Um, uh, NBC News is in it. Uh, uh, Buzzfeed News is in it. The Huffington Post. So any, Leah, I'm going to bring this back to the company that I work for because they're always looking for stuff to do like this. That would be amazing. And everybody can basically take every class. And you know, uh, the classes will never get too big. So my main goal is just like that. You know, we're all able to still get to know each other. Um, because this is an important part of, of what we do. As Sandra said, we've been able to kind of be with her through her treatment. She was in class even when she was falling asleep. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, she has students, you know, she has people kind of all over the world keeping in touch with her. So I really encourage that as part of, I know it seems dumb or cheesy, but it's not. It's actually uh, mm -hmm. the way to use Zoom to connect and not to feel like exhausted by it so and sorry i wanted to say i mean the way that my company does it they do, do it because it's it's great for relieving stress yeah. uh, this is how it came to be and uh, sure. i have to say it's fantastic so oh if God. you want to try to sell it to your company that's you know one of the ways yeah, i mean pam, assuming they care about your stress but yeah it's all goes it. through health and wellness so pam as soon as i'll send you yeah, you want to okay. Right. This is so your what? basic inches, which is what I'm assuming she'll use. Yeah. So you just want to find it on the yeah. other side. All right. So everybody, go ahead and mute yourself. You can mute yourself or not. It doesn't actually really matter to me. Um. Uh. So we are going to start with a grid, as we do often for beginning drawing. Um. And so, so what is a grid? <laughs> So a grid is, we're going to basically divide our paper into equal um, sections, quadrants, so that, and we're going to do the same thing here. So you guys are going to start, you guys are going to start with a, uh, you guys are going to start on this blank sheet of paper with a ruler, sorry, with a, with a ruler and pencil. 
I'm actually going to, you're going to do the same thing that I'm going to do over here with the marker so that you can see. So you're going to start by taking your ruler. Oh, and I'd like you to work on eight and a half, uh, like either a the US size printer paper, which is eight and a half by 11, or uh, let's see, that would be 21.5 by 28 centimeters. Um, or nine by 12 inches can work here, but no bigger than that. Um, so here, I'm taking my ruler. I'm lining it up, right, you can see, with one end here. And uh, this is the 11 inch side, so I'm just going to mark five and a half inches, or 14, if you're using centimeters. You can kind of switch back and forth between centimeters. I'm doing this at the top and the bottom. Five and a half. Five and a half. Yeah, five and a half. Right? So that when I line up my ruler between those two, I can, I can, you know, I know that I'm drawing a straight line through the middle. And then I'm going to do this on the short side as well, which is eight and a half. So if you're using uh, in American, if you're using inches, it's 4.25. You quickly realize how stupid American inches are. Sorry, they really are. Uh, centimeters are way better, but in this. 4.25 over here. And then I can line up my ruler. So it's supposed to be half? Yes. Plus half. Oh, it is supposed to be half. It's supposed to be half. So basically dividing each half exactly in half. So I'm doing this on the um, I'm doing this on my on the paper on the source we're going to be using. Oh. You guys are using a pencil and you're doing this on your sheet of paper. And then after you divide each side in half and draw the lines, you're going to draw you're going to divide each half in half. So on this long side, five and a half. Half of five and a half is 2.75 inches or seven centimeters here. So each half gets divided equally in half. I'm doing it the same at the top. And although this, some people might call this a kind of tedious chore. <laughs> Uh, I really love this aspect because wherever you're coming in from, it really helps to kind of settle your mind and get you focused on the task. You would be surprised how hard it is for some people to use a ruler and measure. Uh, it is a tool, just like anything else, like a buzz saw or like a, I don't know, a fancy spatula or a Cuisinart. Like it's a tool. Um, so you'll find some adjustment as you start to get used to using this tool. Um, you're gonna find the halfway point of each half on the short side too, if you're using inches, that's 2.2. 2.2. So if it feels kind of fumbly, that's totally fine. You're adjusting. You're coming out of your hectic day, your hectic part of your day, or maybe you're just waking up, and you're moving into a kind of slower, more methodical. Way. So we use this grid in beginning drawing. <laughs> Eventually my goal is to move you out of it, but we use it at the beginning because it really helps us to see where things are. Next thing I'm going to do is draw the first lines for you. We'll use blue today. And I'm going to send this over the thread. Isn't this the cutest little picture ever? Um, the wings are still moving because they fly so fast. Right? Yep, yep, that's what I love about this particular picture. So you can kind of see this one. It's kind of a little bit 
you can kind of see, yeah, it'll be interesting to handle that with the brush. So these first lines are gonna be the first lines that you draw. Notice there's no inside lines. Here, hold on, I'm gonna send, a, take a picture of this and send it across the thread so you can see it really clearly. And, and Tatooine sent us a picture of her newly set up studio in her apartment. Which if you're coming to art class eight times a week, you should really have. <laughs> it looks really great, Tosh. And you can see she's got all her pieces hung up that she works on. Probably not all of them. You probably have to switch them out. They probably don't have room for all of them. All right, and then I'm gonna quickly catch up. So for those of you who have finished your grid, go ahead and start to sketch in just the outer shape. Or if you wanna wait a minute, I'll catch up and I'll show you how to do this. We can do it together. You can either start if you're ready or you can wait a minute. Let me catch up with you. Oh, wait, wrong measurement. How do you add a name to a number on? Mm -hmm. uh, you have to create a contact. In the contacts. Yeah, you just so you click on that number and then you create the contact. I was going to click on a number, but I hope it doesn't ring. Okay. Okay. I mean, I guess it depends too, right, on the phone. All right, let's see here. So if you're feeling unsure what to do, just wait until I catch up with you and I'll be able to show you. If you think, if you know what to do, which is to draw those blue lines, the shape of these blue lines using the grid to help you locate where things are, you can go ahead and start doing that. There you go. If not, I'll catch up with you in just a minute and show you what to do. The grid is important because when we're beginning drawing, because one of the things that happens that makes it difficult to draw is that things uh, translating three dimensions onto a flat two dimensional surface while still creating the illusion of three dimension means that things are different shapes and different things are happening on the paper than you think should be happening. So a lot of drawing is getting into right brain here we are. So if you have not started yet, you're going to start by kind of locating. And you, if they ever tell you not to do connect the dots, you can say, nope, when I have a grid, I can connect the dots. I can actually dot here, right, where this line is, this line is, maybe even down here. Notice that this is not exactly A square. Uh, well, it's a little bit more of a little bit more rounded than I had it. But notice that it's kind of kind of pointed on top and slanted down like this. And I'm looking to see a little bit less than halfway. I'll go this way first. Notice that I've kind of got my hand. So you can, you might be able to see this better on your phone or you can look at it up here. And notice also that we're not doing a lot of detail. We're getting what's called the envelope of shape first, the sort of outer shapes, before we try to get to the inner shapes. Notice there's no inner shapes here. We're not even drawing this part of the body right now. Right now, we're just literally getting this outer shape. <clears throat> Thank you. 
I'm doing this fairly quickly. You do not have to do this as quickly. I'm trying to do this quickly so that I can get off my drawing and start to see how your drawing is looking. So once you've got your drawing to a place, go ahead to like this outline, go ahead and take a picture of it and send it on the WhatsApp thread. I can take a look. Notice I'm not trying to do any one line. Let's see, that's interesting. So this comes over here and this happening. Notice that I'm often stopping to kind of figure out where a line starts and ends before I start to, before I really draw anything. That's huge. That doesn't look right. Notice that I'm erasing a lot. Notice that I put a line down and then I erase it. So don't expect that you're going to get everything right on this but, and be, expect to be surprised by where things are. Ooh, I see. That's got to come from me out of here. Right. So notice how I totally had to change where my beak was. And I saw that by looking at the shape of the wing here in relation to the beak. So I'm going to send a picture of this across the thread. You can see it. I'll take a look. So please feel free to take a look at this to get a sense of what it should. It should look a little bit weird because it's sort of uh, lumpy. Hang on, I'll be right back. Sandra, is the bird back? Yes, it's the cat bird. And there's a bird, but sometimes, you know, we couldn't identify it, and it turns out it's the chipmunk. Oh, wow. They make a chirping sound like birds, so I've listened to it a lot, so now I'm hoping I'll be able to identify it. So I would look up in the trees and I couldn't see anything, but now I know why. The cats are out, so... How are they doing? Are, yeah. you, are they doing well? The cats, yes, but they're hoping to catch something, you know? <laughs> of course. Yes. Yeah. All right, let's see. I have to send, I have to send you guys a picture. Um, this was uh, this was a, something somebody shared with me, and as animal lovers, I just thought you would all appreciate it. Just how similar everybody looks to their animals. It's just kind of quite incredible, really. Send it, please, send it. Uh, and by the way, that looks your 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 outer sketch looks pretty good, although Julia, you're down a little bit low here. Am I? See this? Okay. Yeah, you, it comes down almost. You have a little dip yep. happening. Yep. Okay, thank you. It's easy to make things too big. I'm looking at Julia's. Um, let's see. That's looking pretty good, Pam. Hold on, I'm looking at it to see. So, Pam, what I would say is notice that you have a kind of basic, you've done, here, let me see if I can show you here. Take a look here. You've done this, right, on your base, but there's a little bit more 
So if, I, if, it's, if I'm going to do this here, there's a little bit of a bend in and over. It's kind of where his little feet come down and then the feather. So the body really ends here and the feet are below. There's a little bit of an angle in there. You can go ahead and add that in. Good job. Amy. And Amy, you got it, but you made it a little bit too exaggerated. So this is, um, bring up, you've got this going. So Pam, go ahead and bring this in and Amy, just erase the tip here and bring it a little bit closer. Notice that things really, and oh, also Amy, bring your wing out a little bit further and bring your tail out much further. So the tail comes almost, it's a little bit hard to see here. You put your tail here, but really your tail comes out closer to the edge. Notice how difficult it is to get things, to get shapes correct, right? Uh, B, let's see. B, bring your tail out further and bring your wing out a little bit further to the right. Uh -huh. Good job, otherwise looks pretty good. You see these little, so drawing is not about, let's see, Jackie, sorry, you jumped a, you jumped ahead here and got in a little bit of the, let me, let me check it. I thought I'd see if I could do that because yeah. that's. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fantastic. I'm just looking to see if you got it all. Uh, up here looks good. So body shape here, you've got a little bit, I'm gonna show you here, you've got a little bit of a yeah. ball happening. Yep. So go yep. ahead and straighten that line. So the weird thing about drawing is that often when you think things are curved, it's easy to make curves too big. Yep. Yeah, but otherwise this looks great, Jackie. And I would say tail is in pretty good shape. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah, that looks pretty good. So if you wanna jump ahead, Go ahead and jump ahead. You'll see Jackie's kind of jumped ahead a little bit. Let's see. And if anybody, if I haven't looked at anybody's, let me know. I feel like I'm getting everybody, but. Leah, I just sent mine. Yeah, I see that, Bettina, I am looking. So I'll say the same thing to you. So this is really interesting. Almost, uh, almost everyone here made this tail too short. Okay. You tail here rather than here. So bring it farther back, but I want to talk about that phenomenon. Otherwise, this looks great, Bettina. You're in good shape. I want to talk about that phenomenon because what it is, is your left brain, which is your verbal conceptual side, getting in the way of your right brain. So your right brain doesn't think about what this is or it just thinks about shapes in relation to each other. Right, but your left brain is trying to define areas of this bird and your left brain is jumping in and telling you things. So one of the things your left brain is telling you is that the tail is not important. Um, so I'm not even gonna make it as big as it should be. That is the kind of thing that your left brain is doing. This is why it's so hard to draw. Uh, it's not hard to actually draw as it is to see what it is that we're drawing. So be aware, and at some point, we're gonna turn this drawing upside down. <laughs> so for those of you who are ready, I'm gonna jump in with the next step. I'll use another color, we'll use red. You're gonna do what Jackie did, which is basically to outline the light, medium, and dark areas. Again. So if you'll notice, there are these light, these medium, and these dark areas. And that's going to be our next, let's see, and in here, Sandra, are you going to be watercoloring this? If you are, let me know. Here, I'm gonna take a picture of it so you can see it, the details. 
and we're still staying fairly loose. So Jackie, if you're ready, you can go ahead and start darkening your darkest areas. Okay. Um, and pay a little attention to the edges. What happens when a dark edge meets a lighter edge, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're trying to add detail in, I'll, I'll review all this much more clearly, but go ahead and start doing the darkest areas. And here, I'm gonna send this in. So now you've got this. Once again, we're still staying pretty loose. You might find that you'll do some more corrections. I'm finding that I'm kind of correcting the shape of my head a little bit as I add in these dark, these medium, and these light shapes. You'll find that this takes a lot of concentration. You should be tired after this class is over. Tony, I'd like to tell people, it's not like the drawing is impossible, right? It's not impossible, but it does require focus. And um, so the idea is part of like, and this focusing technique. Also, by the way, notice this eye is not exactly round. It's a little bit curved on the top and then curved on the bottom. The other thing I'm going to do here to help you guys out is to show you that we can add an extra set of lines to help us locate where this eye is. We're going to do this. Here. So because it's hard to figure out where that eye is in relation, even with the grid, I'm going to line up my ruler and connect each vertical, each side, each opposite side with the, with the line. So basically I'm making a big X in my box that goes from edge to edge, right? And when you do that here, let's see how well I did. I guess where that eye was. You can see that the eye is kind of right along this eye ah, didn't do too badly. Uh, it needs to come down a little bit though. So you can see that the eye kind of comes in here, which means this changes a little bit. You can see how relational all this shaping is. It kind of leans in on top of this about halfway up from the center. So go ahead and add that in if you want to. And pay attention to the shape of that eye because it's not exactly a circle. If we want to be specific, it's curved lines and then it's straight lines. And then this little bump that's down here, this is where the feet are. Hummingbirds do the cutest things when they're flying. They kind of curl their little legs and their feet in. You might notice, oh, I need to cut this in a little bit. Often, I see this is bad. You'll notice the back kind of sways down a little bit. And it's a little bit darker here and a little bit lighter here. A little bit louder now. I think this needs to come a little bit closer. 
when I look at this, I realize I think the back needs to come in a little bit closer. So you're going to find adjustments. You're going to be adjusting as you go along. I'll be making suggestions for adjustments too. The beauty of doing it like this, though, is that if you have to make corrections, they aren't like impossible, right? Like you don't like you have you don't have one part so off. They're easy to make these adjustments as you go along. So here. And by the way, I'm going, like I said, I'm going pretty fast. Some people are going to be able to go fast. Um, but don't push yourself to go fast. Take your time. Go ahead and send this in. Once again, I'm going to step away for just a second. found about drawing is that it's kind of about embracing the tedium, right? The looking, Julia's laughing, Andrew's laughing. You hear me talk about this a lot. It's embracing the tedium. It's like not assuming, uh, it's knowing how long it takes to get a job done. So I think what we want to do is we want to rush right through the drawing. But in reality, we know that we can't really rush it. We can maybe, if we look, right, see about this much. I can look at this one and go, oh yeah, I need to bring this in a little bit. But I can't also look at this, 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 and get those right. I have to separately look at each piece of this shape. So there's a kind of a, it takes a while. I think people want it not to take a while. They think, you know, it should, we think it should be quick. I know this, I didn't start learning to draw until I was 30. Um, and I was terrible at it. I was a better painter than a drawer, interestingly. I have a whole theory about that. I won't bore you with now. Um, um, And uh, uh, when I, so I could paint, but I really couldn't draw. And I took my first drawing class and it was the worst. I was awful. I could not figure out, like I had to, my assignment was to draw a bunch of boxes on the ground. And I couldn't figure out why my boxes, why I couldn't get my lines right. And my teacher wasn't fantastic at explaining it to me. You know, if you're somebody who's been doing it your whole life, you're not really clear on what it is that you're doing but I was really painfully aware. So I can now tell you pretty much any mistake you're gonna make because I made it <laughs> probably dozens and dozens and dozens of times. So um, it is this understanding and I'm looking here and seeing I made, I kind of exaggerated the side, this, this little bump here too much. So I'm smoothing that out a little bit. I'm also seeing it's closer here. Oh, right, this comes down more. This is bigger. Aha, that makes a lot more sense. So you see how I'm constantly correcting. And if I haven't explained this very clearly, by the way, this is not just the inner lines. We're, dot, we're doing the division between light, medium, and dark shapes, which we will talk about in a second, because as important as getting the shape right, I see a couple more shapes that could be 
spelled out. This is like the back of the wing, really. It kind of attaches here. Um, there's another little line there. There's like maybe one or two lines here. If I look really closely, oh, this comes in a little bit more. Oh, and this definitely comes up. So I had my white area much too low. Often I don't figure that out until I start trying to fill in my lights and my mediums and my darks. So anyway, um, beyond shape, value is also important. Value is the lightness or darkness of any color. Um, you'll see we have about five val values on here. So B, I want you to draw this line, these two lines here, and get the size of your and the location of your eye right. Okay. Yeah. So use this if you don't have a ruler, you use the side of a, another piece of paper or something to just line it mm -hmm. up. Well, so anything you can use as a three inch. Yeah, you can do this. Right. You can use a ruler. You can use a book. So in general, it looks pretty good though. But you'll notice it also looks kind of rough, which is interesting. Yeah. We don't really get to the detail. We're not at the point where we're getting to details yet. Okay. I'm going to wait to see a couple more people's uh, samples and then we'll go on to talk about value and how to use it here and how to work edges here. Ah, uh, Sandra, let's see here. I, uh, Sandra, did you grid this? You didn't, did you? Sandra, did you grid this? Sorry, I'm not gridding because I'm doing watercolor, so I can't put right, you don't graphite want... all over. All right, so I feel like the body is a little bit too small. So I'm gonna show you what I mean here. Keep, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. So I'm going to check it. One, two. It's three heads. Mm. Oh, yeah. Your body's way too small. So see that? It's one, two. If I were to go directly, just to draw a line directly down from here to here, it's three heads. Um, so where do you, where does the head stop? The head stops at the at the red red bit. Yeah, I'll draw it in like that. See that? Because when I do that, it doesn't. It's not three heads for me. Okay. I'm okay. doing it with a calipers. Is three when I'm looking at this right here? Look right here, and I'll show you. Look up here. Right. Here's head one. one. Two. Two. Well, a little bit less than three heads. So what? But two and two and three quarters. Leah, should we be sending you our pictures as we keep going? Yes, so I can take okay. a look at them. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. It's just that I measured the tail and everything, Leah, the length of it. Thank you. I don't think you measured correctly. I'm looking at yours right now, and I'm seeing huh. that the body is too. Well, let me look. Hold on. I'm going to look again. Because if, if then I'm going to have to make the tail longer, but then the body is going to be longer than it is. Actually, I mean, the whole, you know, so the bird is going to be longer than uh, it. Bring the tail a little bit longer. There's just something that looks. I know it looks weird, right? It doesn't look right. The um, head is too large, I think. The head is too large. That's what it is. Yes, fix the head. Fix the head. You got it. Okay, awesome. All right, so notice, um, Pam, is this yours that you just sent in? Or Amy's? I don't know whose this is, Pam or Amy's. Um, notice that your eye is shaped like this. And really, the eye is bigger. It's got a, a flat top and a curved. Make your eye like double the size of your eye. Um, and don't worry. Don't try to get. Don't do this yet because that's not where we are. I just want to see an outline where the light meets the dark. So notice here. Yeah, you guys need to get all of your lines in here. I'll send another picture so you can see them. Oh, good job. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, don't get too much into this wiggly stuff yet. You're not, we're not there yet. I'm gonna talk about how to handle that. This looks pretty good though. Eye needs to be bigger. And it's, and the eye, uh, I want you to draw, Amy, I think this must be yours that just came in. Draw it in this cross and see where this eye and this uh, light, dark separation of the head starts. You'll see it's way too high up and it's not big enough. Uh, by the way, mostly great job. <laughs> I always forget to say, by the way, 95% of this is right. Here's the thing that's wrong. I'll just go straight to the thing that's wrong to tell you how to fix it. But that doesn't mean you didn't do a good job. <laughs> that doesn't, it just means, it just means, you know, I'm just being efficient. All right, good, good. Uh, Tasha, I needs to be a bit bigger and come down a little bit. Notice the eye here really is at the halfway point of this line from here to here. Leah, what did you tell me was like, I, I did the cross. You just couldn't see it exactly because I did oh, it yeah, so lightly. But your eye is... needs to come down more. If you'll notice here, the eye yeah. is really at the halfway point and it's it's twice the size of what you made it. Also, it's a slightly different shape. So your eye kind of looks a little bit like this, like a human eye. Yeah. Right? That's not what's happening here. This is a big okay. eye, kind of like, and I will, um, I have another one of these, which doesn't have drawing all over it. So when we've got our shapes in, I'm gonna remove this <laughs> and we'll be able to see the edges much more clearly. Oh, I see what you mean though. Like my, the, like kind of the cap was too high. Okay. Now I got you. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. And so it's all relational, right? Like, so here's the thing about drawing that's kind of exhausting is you're not just thinking about the eye. You're thinking about this shape up here. You're thinking about this shape down here, right? You're thinking about the shape around it. Everything. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. You're thinking about all of the pieces as well as the thing that you're drawing. So I erased the squiggle lines on mine and made it. Yeah, just make it straighter. We're going to deal. I'm going to show you how to deal with this, okay. this idea of, um, but these are looking great, you guys. Not like, not meaning to, oh, Bettina, that's lovely. I want to see, let's see. Bettina, did you try the cross test to make sure you've got everything? So, could you show me again? Yeah, you need to. Cross, take a ruler and line up your ruler on either edge of your square of your rectangle here and draw a line like that. And then you're gonna do it on the other side as well. So it's like you're making a big X across this whole box. From edge right, to edge. oh, I thought I did it. Um, yeah, I don't see that. Uh, so what I wanna see is that the eye is in the right place, the cap is in the right place, right? This little, dark area comes down that this cross should help you make sure everything's in exactly the right places. All right. Looks mostly like it's in the right places. It's in good shape. These are really great. Julia, great drawing, really great. All right. So I want to talk for a minute about value because that's where we're going next and also a little bit about edges. So besides shape, right, which is really important here, um, there are obviously a hundred million feathers on this hummingbird. We're not going to draw every single one. So how, what do we do? Like, how do we try to convey um, this feeling of feather without having to draw every feather? The answer is um, value and edges. So value is the lightness or darkness of any color. So if this is a uh, white is a one and five is like super dark, two, three, and four are what we would call mid-tones. They kind of gradually get darker, right? One, two, three, four, shades of gray as it were. Right, there are at least five midtones in here. There are at least five shades of value in here. 
And that we really, our eye really goes to the area, and here I'm going to, where one value, where a dark value meets a light value. And hold on, I'm gonna take a look at just a second. I just wanna show you what I mean by this. So for example, my eye comes right here, right? And that's because this dark edge meets this light edge. So where I want to really pay attention to my, my detail is where my dark edge meets my light edge. So you'll notice this is not a this thing. That's not what's happening. In fact, it's what we would call a fairly hard edge, meaning it's not fluttery there's like a little bit of feather that comes up like that. And then it goes like this, right? I'm looking at this edge of this feather and then I'm darkening where that edge meets. So where the most detail goes is where an, a dark edge meets a light edge. That's the same here. So there's a dark edge here. And what I can see is kind of where this dark edge meets, there's a few lighter shapes kind of in between maybe twos. So I'm gonna darken around the edges here. And then here, oh, I don't think you can really see that very well. So I'm gonna take my eraser and really bring that in. I'm gonna bring that up into where it gets lighter. So instead of trying to draw every feather where I'm mostly interested and getting detail is where a darker area meets a lighter area. That's starting to make sense. So as I'm going in and adding detail, and it's the same up here. Now up here, there's a little bit more of a, of a softer edge, a kind of more ragged edge as the light meets the dark. So I might kind of scrumble, scumble that a little bit. Also notice that the eye has a little light, like a kind of a, a two area and a darker area. It's got a darker area and it's got a lighter area, kind of on the top right edge. I'll send you a picture of his head. I might've made him a little bit too big. Let's see here. Notice that the eye is also dark compared to what's around it. Notice that down in here, there's this lovely little dark triangle, which kind of also helps shape the eye. So you see how I'm kind of building out. I'm sort of structuring out my bird. I'm going back in, I'm darkening. I'm lightening, but where I'm mostly paying attention to edges, where I'm drawing feathers, where I'm trying to get shapes is where a dark edge meets a light edge. So instead of kind of driving your, you may add more detail inside once you've done that, but this is mostly lighter, right? This is a kind of mostly lighter area. with maybe a little bit of darker inside. It gets kind of dark here, then it gets really light. The bottom of the beak is dark. So you see how that starts to come out. So I'm gonna send you a close-up picture of this so you can really see these edges. It's called working the edges. It's where light meets dark. By the way, these look great, you guys. You're ready to go on. 
So here is a picture of the head. I'll be working on it up here as well, if you want to watch me. But notice how quickly I got like depth just by adding sort of these scruffly edges where light meets dark. I might decide I want to have one or two more lines kind of coming off here, but I'm not paying half as much attention to those lines as I am along this ruffled edge here. Your lines are going to look different than mine. That is okay. That's about voice. That's about like how you use the tool. So more think about the technique. And then we'll keep we'll keep going. Here, I'll send a picture of this so you can see it up close. If you have more than one, if you have more, you notice I've done all of this with an HB pencil, like one of those things that your kids uses or your students use. Um, as I get, uh, as I get more detailed, I may want to, if you have like different pencils, you'll notice that some of them have like a letter H and a number, and some of them have like a letter B and a number like this one is a B. So the higher the B, the darker the mark. So if I want something to really stand out, 7B is pretty dark, but see, I can go in and darken like that and make my dark really stand out in area, in certain areas. Once I've got my basic values in, you don't want to start with- Hey, Jay. Jay. Huh? Jay, hey, hi, Osiris. Welcome. Hi, Diana. Welcome. Good to see you guys. We're just in the middle of drawing a hummingbird. I, I've been here quite a while. Oh, you have? <laughs> you I was only five minutes late. <laughs> Didn't you hear Sunny bark before? You know, no. first second I did, and then I just, uh, yeah, for a second I did. <laughs> I muted me myself then. Good to see you, darling. That guy is another regular. Oh, my guardian. Oh, yeah, Sandra, better. There you go. I think his uh, beak is a little bit longer, too. But the I love the, the uh, I love what you're doing with the face, how you're dividing the face. So bring the beak out a little longer. OK. Um, and uh, and uh, I'm assuming you're going to start with the grisaille on this. Yes. Yeah, well, I'm wondering what to do with grisaille. Do you think so? Uh, yeah. So, OK. Yeah. So um, that's looking pretty good, Pam. Um, make this, make your top lighter. Notice that this is pretty light up here. Right. So give yourself a light. Sorry, I'm talking to Pam now, not you. You're good. Oh. Um, although, Sandra, this is important for you too, because yes. you know, right watercolor. So uh, Pam, notice you kind of lost your white shape um, as you started scrubbing in your dark. So just go back in and, um, and make this light. And then notice that this whole triangle is pretty significantly darker than what's happening up here. So you want to darken down here as well, right? Not as much, you're darkening not as much as the eye, but you're darkening much more here than up here, right? Uh, right now it looks kind of spotty. It's like you have done a good job of working the edges. Now you need to kind of get these shapes a little bit more cohesive. So bring your, it should be like a three or maybe even a three and a half in value compared to this five for that two. And definitely this whole area should look darker than this area. Good job. Good job, you guys.
So Amy, I just uh, say the same thing for you. Don't forget your white shape here. And don't forget that this whole area is darker. So now go over with your whole pencil and shade in this whole area darker than what's going on up here, right? So now you've worked the edges. Everything gets darker in this whole section without so much detail. I know we've never really had this chance to talk about how you handle that. All right, I like that B. I, uh, I'd like to see, let's see, what do I wanna see? I wanna see a few more whites. So take your eraser. This is a good point to take your eraser here, hold on. You kind of pull in a couple of whites here. That's a little bit too big, but you see what I mean. Um, and then I want you to pull in a few, take your eraser and do a few sort of half moon light shapes across mm -hmm. this dark edge. So this is like a two, this is like a three right. and a half, and this is a four, right? And then right. there's these choppy sort of half moons that are threes that are kind of dipping into four. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay. And then also pay attention. There's also a kind of a line here, right? A hard, dark line that shows the feather kind of shape mm -hmm. like that. So go ahead and add that in too, so that it's not just kind of sitting here, right? We still have a, yeah. feeling, a little bit of a feeling of feather. Great job though, great beginning. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So you see, we get to detail but we get to it in pieces. Great job, you guys. Is this helpful for those of you who've been doing this a while? I mean, I know for all of you who are at the beginning, this is just like, wow. But, <laughs> but if, uh, if is this helpful for those who've been doing this for a while in terms of dealing with transitions with the pencil? I found pretty early. Hmm? Yeah, I was saying this is tricky. It is tricky, trickier than it seems. Uh, much easier to deal with in paint than with pencil. <laughs> That's for sure. Oh, Bettina, lovely, nice. So Bettina, you did do a little bit of a, uh, it's too, let's see. So notice here, it should, everything should be lighter up here than it is down here. If you squint, you'll see, right? That this whole shape is lighter than this whole shape. So you need well, to, yeah. I can see it, but I can't make my pencil do that. Uh, so take your, so erase, and then take your finger and maybe blend a little bit. Or I wish if I had a ship, dang it, I don't have one of those. Do I have one of those things? I don't know if you guys have ever seen those. Uh, what's the word? French standard, what's the French word for that thing, the, bl the blending tool? It's like a stump. A tortillon. Yeah, yeah, the tortillon. Um, I wish I had one. So a tortillon Actually, is like a, a little bit of paper. It's like a pointy, let me look and see. I should it's called also a blending stump. A blending stump, right. Do you want me to show one? I think I've got one. Can you? Uh, let me add yes. on. Yeah, let me add on, because I should have one. I have one here that Brianne gave me. Oh, oh, that's it. Cool. Hold on a second, Jackie. Where are you? Let me find you. I'm here. Uh, there you are. Okay, I'm going to add spotlight so you can see it. So take a look at this for a second. So this is just paper very tightly wound, right? And you can and notice what you can do is you can take it and like kind of smooth out edges a little bit. So what I'm doing with my finger, you can do, the problem with doing it with your finger is that your finger is um, got oil on it. So it will ultimately wreck the drawing, right? The sort of cohesiveness of the drawing. Um, and that blending tool is an even better way to use it. Welcome, by the way, to the world of a million gadgets that you're going to want to, you know, <laughs> spending for the rent, like just Thank you, your pair of shoes because you're not ever going to be able to afford to buy another pair again. <laughs> <laughs> so try, 
Um, so try erasing Bettina and then like kind of taking your finger or a cloth or something and scrubbing over to create a softer edge. Uh, soon in this class, I'm going to be introducing you guys to charcoal and you're going to flip and love it. Oh, Jackie, that's looking great. Okay, so Jackie, I would say the same to you. Everything in this square is darker. It's not quite as dark as what's happening here, mm. right? but it's still darker than what's happening up here. Yeah. What you want to do is darken in there. Yeah, in here. Not as dark as the eye, not as dark as down here, but darker yeah. than here. Okay. Yeah. Good job. Oh, yeah. And you've moved all the way down. But Bettina, I like how you've got the little, I like how you've got your little edges going here. Nice. So you see, you don't have to do everything, which is kind of nice. And as we move down here, hold on, sorry, I'm gonna take, sorry, Jackie, I'll take you off. We don't have to keep staring at you. <laughs> Hello, goodbye, right? Um, it's not, not to make you feel self-conscious or anything. Uh, I'm continuing to move where my darkest areas are. I like to go to my darkest areas first and get those in. So you'll see that the wing kind of attaches up here where I'm blending right now. And the sort of muscles, I think this is the musculature of the wing as it whizzes, is kind of, it kind of attaches. There's a sort of a lost edge here between the edge and notice that this is kind of a softer line as we go in here. So I'm kind of going in and adding. And just like you saw Jackie doing, right, there, it's slightly um, uh, sort of bumpy, right, where the, where, the, um, where the white feathers are kind of coming in over the dark. I'm kind of paying attention to that here. Now down here, it's definitely lighter than up here, but definitely darker than here. So you see it's this constant game you're playing with yourself on edges. I want this to be darker, this to be a little bit lighter. Here's where the body is actually starting, and you can see because it gets a little bit lighter. It's funny, once you get a chance to it, you'll start to see all the lights and the darks, all the different variations of light and dark there are. But instead of letting yourself get overwhelmed with that right away, we're just going to sort of vaguely block in our lights and our darks and then come back here and start to pay attention to detail where a light edge meets a dark edge. See up here, there's a tiny bit of spotting, not too much, a little bit of dark, right? Down here, really, it's where these edges, and actually, not just that, there's kind of a little dusting of middle that kind of comes in around the edges of these things. And then this is darker. And this little edge down here is lighter. Notice this whole little edge of the body. It's kind of lighter. The feet are very dark, thank goodness. Some dark, strong lines I can start to add in there. And I think we're at about that time in the lesson where I'd like you to turn your, your drawing upside down. So go ahead and turn it upside down. I'm gonna turn the shape upside down here too. And you'll see that it's gonna be a lot easier to see the transitions and the shapes that are happening. Talk about another thing to blow your mind. Oh yeah, I can see this much easier. Uh, 
And if you don't know what something is, that's okay. Try to focus on the shape and not what it is. Believe it or not, it's gonna help you. So this is the real mind. This is where we really tell the left brain to take a hike, go read a book, go stew about something, <laughs> go wonder what is really going on, right? In like, I don't know, whatever thing you're worried about. Here, I'm much more able to kind of correct my shapes when I'm not worried about what they are. So that's the other thing. You don't actually have to know what something is to draw it. Oh, and I can immediately see that I need to bring this white shape up. Right, you can immediately see it much better. I, it doesn't matter if I know what it is. I don't have to know what it is to draw it. In fact, sometimes it helps not to know what it is to be able to draw it better. That's a mind, right? A, a glorious mind, uh, mind thing for you. You might find to get this wing in the background. So Sandra, when you decide what your background is, okay. um, you're gonna maybe wanna do a soft version, a very light wash of it all around the bird and then lay your, you may want just the structured part of the fluttery wings with the grisaille and, but then- so you want to put, you're going to lay your wings, basic brush marks of the wings basically on top of your background is my feeling. Because I'm looking at the wing, you know, the right wing. Right. And it's really almost the color of the background, except for the, the lines. Uh, I'm yeah. just about to show you where I'm at now. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I would say you could do it either way. You could give yourself a very soft, precise strokes here, or you could lay your background in first and then put your wings kind of on top. I think either way could work. That's what I just sent it to you. See what you think. I just did Yeah, your... yeah, that's exactly right. So brush in just a tiny bit here, maybe one or two gray lines here, but not too much. And then this one. The, the, the lines are there. The dark, oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, I see it, I see it. Yeah, then I think that's good. You got it, you got it. So brush right. in, you're gonna brush in your background on top of that. I think that I guess work. the wings are just slightly yellow compared to green, but that's yeah, I like it. I like it. Okay, let's see. Oh, nice. All right. So just keep uh, going. So once again, notice that uh, Pam, that although this is dark, this is still fairly dark. This is a five. This is a four. What you've got is like a two. We really want this one to show up as a one. So I've got to surround everything with much darker. See that? But this is looking better. It's coming along. Woo! Good job, Amy. Love it. Yep, yep. So just keep going, working those edges, getting those little feet in there. You may at some point, which is what Sandra and I were talking about, with the background, you may want to get your background which is darker around your bird, right? Particularly in the areas where things are lighter. So over here, it may be helpful to help you showcase the lightness by putting dark around the edge. I sent you my last word version. I'm still adjusting the... I saw that you made his head much smaller. It looks great. Oh. Hold on, let's take a look. And then I might even adjust this a little bit lighter. See how I just ran my brush over that. So this background, maybe not everywhere, 
but in certain places is helping. So the background is lighter than the bottom of the beak, but much darker than the top of the beak. It's darker than the top of the head, but a little bit lighter than what's happening in this middle part of the head. So you see, you can start to adjust your background to help your shape really come out. Good job, you guys. Amy, that's looking great. Good job, Cybo. Uh, let's see here. Oh yeah. Thank you. Yep, that's definitely it. I like this background too. I think you should consider, and you know what else I like? I kind of like, uh, Diana, how this area is, is staying really rough and loose. Oh, wait, I just have to put you in focus. I have it. Oh. Okay, let me show you. I really love how her left shoulder is kind of uh, staying loose. So I wouldn't do too much actually to this, like keep it very, very loose, maybe just a little bit of variation. This is reminding me of Mary Cassatt in a really good way, right? Remember where the shapes that are on the outside are kind of directing us. They're simple, but they're directing us in. So I really like that. So don't overdo this because this is actually looking pretty good. Her left uh, would be her left shoulder. Nice work, you guys. These are great. So I think this is the thing about drawing that I find really fascinating. There's a whole construction element to it, right? There is a P it's like all the pieces have to fit into place for, um, so you notice I was talking to Diana about a part that seems very unimportant, right? In her portrait, it's this very loose left shoulder of the woman that she's painting. But if she treats it right, she can keep that shoulder very simple and we will not notice it in the final painting. We'll feel almost like the person is emerging from the painting. So it's conversation always about different pieces. How much detail do you put? You don't put equal detail into everything. And I think that's the thing that gets kind of um, sort of mind boggling. We get sort of caught up in the detail, but if we pay more attention to transitions, work, uh, our, our work is easier. And then at some point, the painting will do what we call locking in, right? It means all of a sudden you're going to look at it and go, well, hell, that's all I needed to do to make this turn into a drawing, right? A finished drawing. You'll be surprised at how it happens. I've been doing this 20 years. I still delight and surprise in every time it happens. I never know quite when it is going to lock in. And I always love it when it does. It's like, ah, oh, it's like magic to me. So if you're doing this the first time, you might not be able to see how your finished drawing is going to come out. But if you're doing this, um, if you're doing this, uh, like, um, how do I say it? If you're doing this like a long time, you'll realize that the, the drawing stays what we would call kind of awkward until it's no longer awkward, right? Until all of a sudden one thing, one line will change it. And that's always surprising. And ask questions. If you're struggling with something, send it along to me. If you're like, my job is to kind of get you over those humps. So, and if you're just doing fine, if you're just cruising, just keep cruising.
do you have advice for how to do the shading or the values in the white areas? Well, you're not really going to shade the white areas. Okay. So, right? Like you're going to leave those. I would, but Tina, I'd leave those till last. There may be one or two little areas that you'll do, but let's leave those to be the very last thing. Okay. Ooh, nice. So look at how Tosh Ween has handled this, you guys, very simply. So her edges, her concentration is kind of in where the edges are, right? So yeah, don't worry so much about whites. Worry about the other areas. Look at these transitions that she's done right here. They're simple, but it really works. Nice work, Tosh Ween. That's really wonderful simplification. I love it. I see uh, Amy Seibold doing the same thing over in her piece. It's great. These are so great. Oh my God. By the way, they're all darling. <laughs> they really are. Oh, Osiris, lovely, love the, so I just get a little bit lighter on the top here. I notice I'm looking at this upside down and darker in this kind of middle triangle of the face. And then you've got the bottom areas, beautiful. Good job, huh, I love it. Great work. Oh, I see. And you guys are sending, I'm going to send this over to the Saturday class. That's Sandra Mahler's. Some people sent stuff over to Friday. And it's easily done when you're in several. When you're in all of them. <laughs> so each class has its own WhatsApp thread and it keeps, we just keep using the same one. So regardless of whether you're coming to class, Bettina, you may have noticed that you've been getting every single class, <laughs> like everybody's work, like all the notes that are in between. Um, I feel like the WhatsApp thread makes it more, feel more like a class. I mean, you'll eventually, I mean, I see Bettina what you're talking about. There's little light grays in here, like a two. So you can, you can gently add those in kind of lightly. Let's see. One of the things I like to do, oh, Jackie, that's lovely. So Jackie, this, just notice that this area is pretty much as dark as the background, just a little bit darker. Oh, okay. So can you see it when it's upside down? Look at yeah. that. Yep. Pretty much the same value as this. And you have to, if you squint, see that this is much lighter than this. Yeah. So run your pencil kind of straight through to kind of shade it all the way through. Okay. Do this. When I'm trying to do something lighter, I kind of lean back on my pencil. Yeah. Like back farther away, right? So I don't lose my other lines that I've added in. Uh, and I can do that to go darker. When I gotta go, when I want to get in darker and heavier and add more marks, I I kind of choke up on the pencil a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So, Bettina, if you're right here, you can see I could lightly kind of go in and add a little bit more light grayish that kind of, in which case I probably want to get rid of some of these 
sort of original pencil lines so that this looks a little softer. And up in here as well, there's kind of a sort of a raggedier edge. Um, and it's not like a not like a like this. It's not like this, right? That's not what's happening. It's more like this. Come in here. I need to, I need to get one of those erasers. I'm gonna get one of I'm gonna get myself one of those erasers that like Jessica was showing me. It's more like this kind of um a irregular shape. It's more like here, down here, right? Kind of up here. That's more what those edges look like. I know that this is darker, so I want to kind and harsher. So I want to make sure I get those as darker and in here. And then I want to make sure that this feels cohesive. So you see how kind of as you're working one edge, how it meets another. And then there's this kind of sweet little kind of triangular. There's a few triangular. Feathers in here that go from darker to lighter. So there's like kind of three key areas that they're transitioning from light to dark. Pencil direction can also have a lot to do with it. Your mark making can kind of show um, right like uh, lines are going like this or they're going like this or they're coming this way. So we can see those marks and we'll notice I noticed that up here towards the head, these feathers are kind of going like little vertical lines. So I'm bringing them in. I'm really, I'm going over the edge where light meets dark here with the dark lines. And then from here, maybe I get a little bit darker, but not too much. So here's a question. Anybody idea have any idea how much time has gone by? Don't look at your watch. Does it feel no, so I know. Does it feel like 90 minutes has gone by? No. <laughs> I love it. That's the timelessness. What you're really doing when you're drawing is you're bringing yourself into present moment. The present moment isn't about time. It's not about uh, how time passing and the feeling of time passing. It's not about, it is about the future in the sense that, you know, you're trying to construct something that you hope will, you know, turn out to be what you, you know, the drawing that you want it to be, but you will forget in the process. The process of drawing is a very present moment experience. It is as good as meditating in my belief. I think meditating is really hard. I don't think meditating is easy. And I think this brings you into a meditative space more than almost anything else, which is, um, so Pam, that's one of the things we tell employers all the time is um, this is a process that can bring you into, away from your worries, whatever they are, right? And into a kind of present moment Also, it's fun for people to get to know each other. I think the Reuters people, like for example, Reuters, who has been doing this the longest, I think a lot of people are getting to meet each other um, who do totally different jobs, live in totally different areas of the world. Kind of fun for people. And to meet. yet the nice thing is like, you sometimes have heard of each other yeah. or you 
they tell you what they do and you know instantly what you understand instantly what they do because yeah. it, it relates to what you do um it's really nice that way to kind of meet people like that right like julia for example uh does is on the sort of software is developing a lot of the tools that the journalists and the reuters need so julia thompson reuters is developing a lot of tools that the journalists are using to publish news right so how often do you get to like meet the people who are developing the tools uh to do your job so that's kind of neat that's another neat aspect of it that that i really like but mostly it's this thing of being in present moment forgetting about time and as jackie said letting go of your expectations just getting in the moment looking at stuff. I hope you're still working upside down. Not you, but you're drawing. about art too is it's definitely one of those things that you will never get too good at you know what i'm saying there's always going to be like something to strive for so no matter how great you do and it is wonderful it's it's not going to get boring because there's always going to be ways to improve and that is a nice uh, yeah i can see here i really need to see that and I need to do is sharpen my pencil. Uh, you'll see as we move into different materials, into drawing materials, when I start demonstrating and uh, I suggest that you start following me in charcoal, you're going to see that charcoal does a completely different thing than pencil. Um, some people really love. It covers some of these things, but Tina, that you're struggling with, with pencil, they just go away with charcoal, completely go away. Charcoal becomes uh, resolved just because of the nature of the material. So I'm excited to take you guys there when you get there, which will probably be in about a month. I have a supply list for people in America. I've actually got a a student kit that you can buy from artists and craftsmen online. It'll send you everything you need for ink and charcoal supplies fairly cheaply. Um, and you will love it. I loved it for me. Charcoal was really where I learned that I could draw. And I struggled with the pencil, but when I started working with other drawing mediums, uh, drawing made more sense to me. And I was able to bring those back to the pencil and bring the unruly pencil into line a little bit. Yeah, there we go. See, adding in that background under that little white belly helped me sort of show the edge of the white belly a little bit more.
All right, I sent in my Tina, lovely. All right, so I've got love the way the head is starting to come out. I love the way, uh, so I see what you were doing. You're really doing that transition of slightly darker up here and the lighter down there, that works. Um, let's see here. Do you, Bettina, do you have a 2B? I um, do. So why don't you go in and really darken the darkest areas with your 2B? So that's down in here, the things that you'd really characterize, the eye, this area, uh, let's see, the feet. Go in and darken, I love it. I mean, are you happy with it? I am. So what, you would use a 2B and not a 6B to darken? I mean, you could try a 6B. 6B is really intense. Um, I like, yeah, 2B. Try, how about, let's, 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 uh, let's negotiate. How about a 4B? <laughs> I love 4Bs, I think. It's actually really fantastic. So if you go in here, you'll actually see there's some kind of neat in the eye here. There's some kind of neat lights and darks. Yeah. Well, you're going to just kind of, you know, darken your darkest areas down in here in the eye, except that little corner. Um, some of these, you can maybe add in some of those darker dots in here, right? See how I have those feathers that kind of rope in over here. You can um, work on this edge here. You can get in here a little bit because in here is a little. You can see actually that the the body kind of turns away. There's like this part of the body. It's one side, and then there's this part of the body. It gets a little bit lighter here. You can see the transition. It's kind of like right in here. Later we get to, right? So this is one side of the body. This is kind of the top of the body. You can see it's darker here and lighter here. So yeah, just keep emphasizing those things. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, Pam, beautiful. This is lovely. Oh my God, I'm seeing some really lovely, I'm loving some of these transitions. So let's see, make this, uh, take your oh. and pull out the lights here in the head, right? See how I'm doing that? I'm kind of pushing my eraser and lightly rolling over everything just to push this transition a little bit more, right? Because this is, fairly light next to this. Nice. Ah, Jackie, lovely. All right. Still, this is darker, Jackie. I don't know what- it should, be, it should be darker than it is? Yes. Okay. Can you see it? Right now, you have these things as the same value. Yep. And the bottom is darker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Darker. This is like a five. This is a four, and this is a three. Okay. Four, three. But I like this. This is looking great. You, should, you guys are doing great. I'll be lovely. I love the little marks you've got down here. Great to pick up some. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Great work. So B, did you have to get permission to move and continue working on your beat? I don't know what your beat is. Which yeah, I did. Um, I uh, We only have to be here for a year because <clears throat> of my boyfriend's job. So they basically said you can work from home for another year and then come back to New York. Awesome. Yeah, it's a nice change. What do you cover again? I'm on the social media team. Okay. So, so I cover everything. From anywhere. I missed where you moved uh, to Baltimore, oh, so okay. near DC. Yeah, I'll probably actually go into the DC office sometimes once things are normal. Oh, cool! It's a nice change. 
Yeah. I love this new way of working. I know it's not great for everybody, but um, I think it's given people a lot of flexibility. And a great quality, more quality of life, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, for the cat, for your cats, anyway. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, so for suddenly those people who have moved, they've moved to places where they have more space and it's cheaper. Right. Um, you know, when they get they're closer to countryside. Amy Seibel, these are great. I love these. These are lovely. Did it help? By the way, how did it help? Pam's, you? hold on. Pam's is first and mine's second. Looking at it right now. Um, I love them both. Did uh yeah. This is this. I, I'm in, I'm actually impressed that I can do this as well as I'm doing it. But I wouldn't say it's going to take a while. Right, right. I mean, that's the idea. It's funny. Think about this. Think about what. It's amazing to me that drawing is the only thing where um it's drawing is the only thing where like within one hour your idea of what you think you can do rises up right your bar goes up quickly and your critical level also grows up so as much as you're like like it's amazing to think at the beginning of this class if i had just handed you this picture and said draw this you would have been like you know no fuck you right <laughs> <laughs> But like after two hours, you can do it way better than you think you do. But then all of a sudden you're like, well, I could do it so much better than that. <laughs> right? Like, so this is, this is the, this is the process, right? For the drawing. And then there's still a practice to the drawing. So I've been, I've been talking to Jackie about this. You guys want to hear my spiel on, on uh, drawing and how it can help and how you incorporate it into your life in a daily way. Um, if you are working full time, my recommendation is if you want to get better at drawing, you get in an average of three hours a week. And that two hours is basically this class. So two hours is this class and then another hour of practice, however you want to. That's your low bar. But what you'll immediately find is that's easy to do, and then you bring it up to six. So realistically, if you can get between three and six hours of practice a week with your full-time job, you're gonna improve dramatically. And you're gonna experience all the feelings of, um, you know, that drawing brings you uh, equal parts the frustration and, and maybe the just like exercise that sometimes you don't want to do it or it feels hard to get into it, but also that feeling of accomplishment and kind of um, timelessness that happens when you do it, the meditation that happens when you do it. So three to six hours is the best. So Jackie took two drawing classes this week. That's four hours. And then she spent two hours last night working on another drawing from a different class on a video channel. So you can, she can, you can easily pretty much get in six hours a week and still work, right? And that is, the, I think three to six is a good, what you'll find is if you're really hardcore, you'll get in 12 hours a week beyond working full time. But I don't recommend that as a bar. I recommend three to six as what you try to aim for to get in. And if you do that, you will experience the benefits of that. A lot of the benefits. Um, how else is it here? Let's bring these. Uh, it's important to turn this right side up at some point. Oh, yes, he looks a lot better. There we go. It's amazing how, um, yeah, it's amazing how much we can do and how much, um, how much, how much, how sort of satisfying it is to be able to do this kind of building. I like to call it building like construction. It's like building a, um, a shed in your backyard or um, a table, right? This is construction. How do you start? How do you end? You know, what? where do you focus on what, right? And then what is the surprising element? And what you'll find is if you're willing to live at the drawing looking kind of awkward for a while, there'll be this moment where it just, boom, pops out and you're like, hey. So I don't know, like we got about 10 minutes left. 
Does anybody want to send me their picture to take a look at it? Or if you're feeling done, that's, oh, B, that's great. I love it. Really great. I love these. If you want to send me your drawing, I'll give you something that you can work on for 10 more minutes. If you feel like totally happy, you could also just sit and chill and have a drink, <laughs> kick off the holiday weekend. <laughs> Somewhere it's five o'clock on here. Uh, Julia, where Julia is, it's five o'clock. So <laughs> that means all of you can start drinking now. <laughs> Does anybody else still need to see this or do you feel like you can work without looking at it? You need me to, I can also pull it down. I'll keep it up for a few more minutes. Let's work for like five more minutes and then we'll pick an area that you think you could improve. Um, and the other thing about this is I want you to get how long it takes to do something right? Like how much time, so instead of getting, I think what really happens is we get all focused on, I've got to get all this detail around the eye, right? That's how the amateur thinks, right? Got to get all this detail around the eye. And then you do that and then you're mm -hmm. exhausted, right? As opposed to, I need to get my basic shapes in and my basic light and darks in. And then let's see what happens. That's a different way of constructing. So it's good to know like how long things take. Oh, Osiris, I love it. I think you should incorporate this into one of your art pieces. <laughs> I love this piece. I love it. Did you notice I had to, I had to osiris size it, you know? Yes, I, I love it. I think it's, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Thank you. I love the way, I just love it. It's very, <laughs> I sized it. I love it. <laughs> think you should i'd love to see this in a painting of yours yeah that's funny. It's pretty fucking great <laughs> <laughs> i should be careful there are occasionally children on this class on this class but uh including this really lovely mormon girl in uh montana named um addie who likes to jump in who's 11 but she seems to not really she seems to just sort of drift over all the adults talk Isn't that your cat? Who's that? Abby, isn't that your cat? I had, <laughs> no, my cat is Muka. Oh, oh wait, isn't that Melissa's cat's name? Somebody's cat's Abby, name. Abby, Melissa's yeah. got Abby, that's right. That's where, okay, that's where I went with that. <laughs> so ladies, are you still working on it? Or are you like totally yeah. exhausted and feeling- I'm just about to send it to you, Leo, but- awesome. I got lost in the details. That's okay, it happens. It happens. And now, don't, don't, not, don't, not leave that. Now it's lightened, so it doesn't look. Let me see. Just, we'll see. So some of these guys are, are turning these, are using this, the drawings as a basis for uh, watercolor paintings. If you want to learn watercolor, I have that class on Fridays. Oh, Bettina, lovely. Yeah, girl. <laughs> yeah. Maybe yeah. will you do a connector for me? Yeah. And then I can choose any length to, of the next piece, right? Oh, oh, I don't know, Sandra. I love it. Um, here's what I would do. Mix a little bit. I like the way uh, she's trying to channel her. See, Sandra? <laughs> That's great. So, uh, Sandra and um, Tosh, what I would recommend is blending your green into the wings, the green color into the wings. Because they're so transparent, bring that, instead of going around them, oh, bring, yeah. that, sorry. Bring, that, bring the background into the other classes that I'd say kind of like the concept. I haven't done a background yet. Just yeah, I haven't done a background yet. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, I lost interest at a certain point, but mm -hmm. it was very peaceful. Mm -hmm. It was peaceful. Um, did you say you lost interest at a certain point, Amy? <laughs> I didn't realize I was still on. <laughs> yeah, so I apologize about that. No, but that's, I was just saying, yeah. I was just saying Use the cause. Um, <laughs> man's here. Um, 
yeah, I was saying it, I enjoyed it a lot in the sense of like, you know, it does take you out of your head and then like, you know, I'm just, and we've been beating. So look, so I've been beating yep. and, and they were sitting in front of me. Hold on. Where's the, there we go. And the, so they were sitting in front of me while I was drawing. And so then when I lost interest, I'm like, oh, now I'm going to be. <laughs> and Amy, I'm going to tell You're you. Creative. I'm going to tell you something that I know about you, which yeah. is that you're a painter in your heart. So yeah, she's you kind. lose interest in the drawing, which is what happens to me all the time. I don't know if you noticed, I lost interest in the drawing. <laughs> uh, I mean, I love drawing, right? But drawing is like fan central to my work as an artist. But if I don't get to add color, which I don't when I'm doing a beginning drawing class, I also lose interest in the drawing. So some people, uh, some people can get totally lost in the black and white. You know what I mean? You can get totally lost in it. And I'm more likely to do that now than I was, but you really should take a painting class because painting, the drawing is very important in the painting, but the painting is where you're going to be, where you're going to be. Cause I know. Uh. And so that, well, that's what I was just saying to Pam. I said, you know, I'll have to look at like the, your class schedule because I wouldn't mind, or even maybe I'll come over to the studio. Right. Right. So, and like, you know, and just play. Cause like, yeah, this is like a whole new world for me. I love that. You playing, I want you working, but you're going to like the work better in paint. Like, you're just gonna like it. You're gonna be able to, and guys, this is cause uh, if you walk into Amy's house, every wall of every room in her house is a different color. So- <laughs> I love it. Walked into it. Well, shit, you're a painter. And she's like, no, I'm not a painter. I paint my walls. And I'm like, oh no, that's how it always starts. If you're, <laughs> and not to say that those of you who are enjoying the drawing process won't totally, be, you will. Drawing is integral to painting can't really paint without drawing but like for some people uh, myself included but the pencil is not my favorite medium I'm about to introduce you to my favorite drawing mediums my favorite drawing mediums are charcoal and ink which are a little bit more painterly so uh for those of you who want to continue with classes so Bettina you just bought a pass um I'm going to send you guys a link to the supplies that you'll need as we start going into oh. and ink because oh, Yes, they're amazing. And do, that, you, do, you, do you do the link through the Zoom call or through the like? I'll it right, I'll you... send it right through the chat. I'll send it right through the chat. So oh, okay. Got it. Grab it right now and I'll bring it in. Could you, Put it could in. you also send the YouTube link? Yeah, absolutely. The original version of this. I mean, this is nice this too. Is the original. I just took but I feel like there was more on the top. Well, I, that's what I'm saying. I'm gonna, I'm putting more on the top, but I'm gonna, I'm I wanna do a little bit of a connector here. Oh, okay. That's what you were saying. Yeah, but I'm saying, do I need something in here for the connector, you think? Like, or no, like that connector, and then yeah, you can always put one, maybe put a, no, it'll be fine. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Leah, thank you so much. This was really fun. Welcome, lady. It was great to have you here. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Oh, if, oh, 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 oh. Uh, you can, we're going to go to 11. So if anybody wants to hang out to 11, hang out to 11. Uh, okay. So we're going to go. It was wonderful to meet all of you. Yeah. Bye. And Bye. all your drawings were so inspiring. Okay. I was like, whoa, <laughs> some of you are so good. <laughs> Everybody's pretty good. Oh, Julia, great. We have a good teacher. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> this is fantastic. Wonderful. Wonderful. These are great. All right. Aren't they on? <laughs> I, Amy and Pam, I'm glad you joined. And I'm going to send the links across the thread now. Let's see here. Let me find it. Um, Leah, I think I'm gonna need to bring you one of my one of my uh, sun catchers to I, put up in the studio. I will not argue. <laughs> I'll take that. I'll definitely take that. All right, here is the link. All right, I'm sending the link to the uh, the um, drawing kit now. Anybody do WhatsApp? Yep, WhatsApp. It's there. 
I'll send the YouTube link to the classes as well. Oh, I see. Where it says art is craftsman. Yep. Is that it? Okay. Yep, that's it. And then I'm going to send the YouTube link as well. Let's see here. <laughs> I was trying to find the YouTube link. That's the problem. Oh. Bye, you guys. Bye. 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 Bye from LA. Bye from LA. Oh, wonderful, Lana. Wonderful. You can just go darker, Lana. So just build your darks in. Um, so lay the darks in on the top uh, in here to sort of get your little bird's body to stand out a little bit more. Just build in your darks. Very nice. Watercolor is so hard. <laughs> it's the hardest. All right, let's look into my YouTube. Here it is. You didn't send this to YouTube yet, right? No, it's hard for me to figure out how to grab it on my phone. Hold on, I'll figure it out. I'll send it over. I'm going to do it the old person way. <laughs> I feel so old. I just did a show um, <laughs> with a group of millennials and they made me feel so fucking old. It was <laughs> well, then you can imagine how people, how I feel. That, if you said you feel old, you can imagine how I feel. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, right? <laughs> just absurd. Then I have to explain my age, like, ah. Uh, I know. I look. I know before there was. I was alive before there was the internet. I did my I, papers in high school. No, the way they look at you, like, how did you? What did you? Do? The word? What did you just say? It's like, oh, they don't say that word anymore. Right? It's so funny. It's funny. Uh, hang on, I'm I'm emailing this to myself. And they say, oh, I'm I'm thirty. I'm I'm a Miss Osiris. I'm forty two years old. I'm like, really? Then what am I in the grave? Yeah. I'm old. When when am I dead? <laughs> it <was> like, <laughs> All right. Here is the YouTube channel. I'm copying it and sending it across the thread as well. So all oh, you got it. that I teach are here, and yeah. anybody is welcome to access that at any time. If you subscribe to it, it's easier. it lets you know when a new subject is up. Um. Aren't I following you on your i on your IG, Liam? Uh, yes, I think so. Oh, okay, I think so. Great work, everybody. Everybody feeling proud. Thank you. Thank you. Hold your pieces up so we can kind of see them. Put your set. Put everybody in gallery view, and then hold your pieces up so we can see. Yeah. So what I oh god, that's a great Osiris. So what I love about all these is that although they are all like different, they still followed technique, right? And look how different they are. And they're beautiful. They're wonderful. We did really great. I'm so proud of you guys. Great work. We're gonna go onward and onward and upward. So this will be a pastel landscape class tomorrow at 9 a.m. noon, five, six, and nine thirty, depending on where you are uh in the world. There's not gonna be a painting studio tomorrow. Um Next week, uh, back to the regular schedule. So there'll be abstract art on Tuesday. There's figure drawing on Wednesday. There's beginning drawing on Thursday. There's watercolor painting on Friday. There'll be beginning drawing Saturday and then landscape and landscape pastels and painting studio, oil and acrylic on Sunday. What is your beginnings drawings on Thursday and Saturday only? Thursday and Saturday. What time on Thursday? Uh, 3.30 p.m. LA time. Sorry, yeah, 3.30, 3.30 p.m. 3.30 p.m. LA time. Okay. Um, and for those of you who don't have the schedule, I'll also send the PDF of the July schedule. Okay. That is okay, well. great. Yep. 
Um, and if you art pass, you're, you know, if you're in the art at work program, you're welcome to just come to any class. If you have an art pass, just register for any class online. So any of those classes will work. Uh, great work, everybody. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Does it look better with a vague background or not? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty. It looks, it looks fantastic. It looks really? It doesn't look fantastic to me, but I'll send. Okay. Keep working on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I have a commission. I have to do a deer. Oh, wonderful. Okay, excellent. Well, right, you guys, I'll see you all hopefully next week. Have If you're American, pr try not to be too embarrassed about our dumb country celebrating our dumb things. <laughs> hey, my, my, all my folks always remind me that they kicked us out. So. I to the good part of America, wherever you find it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll see you all soon. Okay. Bye, Bye, Leah. Thank you. Bye, Bye. Bye Leah. Bye, guys. Bye from LA. Thank you. Bye.